Welcome, Wizard Apprentices. My name is Brian Kwong, also known as the Salesforce Wizard due to my choice of head apparel during Salesforce events. And welcome to the first episode of Wizard Apprentice focusing on the Lightning Flow Builder. You may have seen my previous flow videos using the old Flow Cloud Designer. Now, a lot of this is going to be similar because Flow is still Flow, but with the whole new Lightning Flow Builder, a lot of things have changed, including the user interface. So, the goal of this series is to provide you with an introduction to Salesforce Flow, but in bite-sized video. Each video is going to focus on a single aspect of the Lightning Flow Builder before we move onwards to more advanced examples, tips and tricks using Salesforce Flow. This is the first video in the series, and it's going to be a general overview. So first, let's talk about what Flow is. Well, Flow is an automation tool within Salesforce. It is similar to code, except for there is no code that's required, but it's there for complicated logic where you can't simply do what you need to do in the other automation tools like Process Builder. It is considered a declarative tool because it's all clicks, no code. There are a few things that are different than the other declarative tools that you may be used to. There are some general terms that we need to go over. There are programming code-ish, but you're not actually gonna be writing any code. The key part is the logic that you need to follow within Flow is gonna be a little bit different than what you may be familiar with. And that's okay. What we'll be doing in this series is going through all those concepts in a manner that I will hope you will find more digestible than going through in a whole bunch of trailheads or watching longer videos. So this video is going to be an overview just to get us started. And then from there, we'll proceed to going through some of the other items, starting with the elements, talking about variables, going into actions before we dive into some general concepts like how do we do with loops and what do we do with S object collections and things like that. So I hope you enjoy and let's go ahead and start this video on what exactly is Lightning Flow Builder. All right, let's go do our overview of the Lightning Flow Builder. Something's missing, one second. Yeah, that's better. You can't be a wizard without your hat. Okay, so here is our Lightning Flow Builder, and it's broken up into two different sections. We have our canvas, where I'm standing right now, and then we have our palette right here off to the side. Now, we are essentially automation artists when it comes to Lightning Flow Builder. And like every good artist, we have the canvas we paint upon, and we have our color selection in our palette. The same is th true for us with lightning flow. So our canvas is where you are going to put your elements and actions. Basically, what is the flow doing and how does it progress through the, uh, the flow itself? Every flow will have always a start element. That's that little round one right up here that looks like a play button. And then you would draw lines to say, hey, from here, this is where it's going to progress. So you can see we go from our start button to an element called Demo Hello World. Going down our palette on the left-hand side is broken up into two different items. The first one is the elements. Elements is where you're gonna spend most of your time when you're building flows, simply because this is where your colors are, where you're gonna be dragging and dropping from the palette over into the uh, canvas. Now, we'll go through what these do in different videos. This is just an overview to kind of get you started. But we can see that we have things from user interface. Basically, what do people see if it's a screen launch flow, meaning it's not just happening automatically being called by Process Builder. We have logic, and this is where we can assign values, where we can decide different pathways. We can even pause or loop through sets of data. Speaking of data, we also have ways that we can create records. We can update existing records we can just go out and say hey i need to go find all the accounts to match them set a criteria or other data in salesforce and then of course we can delete records and then the last items are actions now this may look like a very short list for people who are familiar with the old cloud designer but when you drag and drop an action we actually have a dialogue that opens up that allows us to search for a whole bunch of different actions and we're not going to go into all of these in this video again this is just an overview we'll be taking a look at these actions in a different video 
So that's our element palette and how we can work with it on the classics uh, on our canvas. Now, the other section of our palette is the manager. The manager is a really nice tool. It really gives us an overview of what is in our flow. We can see all the elements down here that we're using. We can see things like choices and decisions and our screen components. Screen components are what shows up on those screens, right? Now, what I really like about the manager is it can help you find where you're using something. So for example, I have a choice called continue forward here. And if I go, where am I using this? I can click on the little arrow and it will pop up and it will tell me, hey, you're using this in the decision element called Warrior Continues and is this area called Choose Your Path. This can be really helpful when you have a large flow. In our example here in our canvas, it's a pretty small flow. I mean, we're talking four elements here, but I've seen flows all the way up to 100 plus elements, and you can imagine if you're trying to debug something, update something, being able to quickly find where something is being used in across the entirety of the flow is very, very helpful. The other thing I like about using the manager is if you build flows like me, a lot of times you build something, realize, oh, I could have done that better or I could do it differently, and so you build additional things that result in having stuff that you just don't use anymore. And you should always clean that up before you make your flow live. So for example, if I have a variable here, I can click through all my items in the manager and I can see I don't use this variable anywhere. So you can safely delete it. Now, it's always very careful to make sure you know what you're doing before you delete, but that's okay. Now, going across the top here, we have a couple of different things. We have our save buttons. Um, with Flow, you can always save, but if something becomes active, you have to save as a new version. There is no, there's no kind of like editing the same Flow over and over and over again once it's edited. It's always versions of Flow. We have the debug, which is a great tool for trying to figure out what's going on with the Flow. Uh, and we'll take a look at that in a different video. We could just simply run the flow as is, um, which to be quite honest, I stopped using. I use the debug more often than not. And then in this particular situation, we can see whether our flow is active. And you can see this is an actual active flow that I created four years ago for the original Wizard Apprentice uh, flow videos. And then all the way off to the left, we have our little gear symbol, and this gives us access to be able to change what the labels and the description. And to be honest, this is something I really only do the very first time when I create a flow and save it. Once it's been saved, typically this information doesn't change. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you want to make sure you get more Wizard Apprentice, make sure you hit the subscribe button and then click on the little bell icon to make sure you get notified in the next video. And if you want to get neat shirts like the Flonatic shirt I'm wearing now, you can get it by going to thewizardnews.com slash shop, and you'll find a whole bunch of different swag. You can get mug, coffee mugs, pretty much whatever you want on it, uh, with this wonderful decal. You can also check us out at thewizardnews.com for blogs, as well as the WizardCast podcast. Again, thank you for watching, and remember, magic is out there. It's yours for the taking.